Human beings depend on feedback to survive, no matter the context. And the context often helps inform the kind of feedback needed and the time when it should take place. So I recently got some very timely feedback on my parenting. Uh, my wife sent me a text message with some pictures. She was visiting my daughter's class, and they were doing an activity where they drew a picture of somebody in their lives and then wrote something about them. So here, here's the one from my wife. It says, this is my mom. She makes the best French toast sticks. And you can see there's happy faces, ideas of nurturing, providing, you know, all, all great things. And then for, for me, this is my dad. He deleted Netflix. <laughs> and so this was my kind of just-in-time feedback on how I was doing uh, as, as a parent. And so this is, this is what I want to talk about, which is feedback and assessment and, and the timeliness of such things. So in teaching and learning, I like to think, I look at things through kind of three, three phases. Uh, and the first is the intent or what is to be learned. Some might call this learning goals or objectives, outcomes, those kinds of things. The experience, how it's going to be learned. Some might call this instructional design or learning design. And then the assessment, and some people will interchangeably use feedback, evaluation, all of those things. But really, how do you know that something has been learned? And you can look at a lot of elements of life and learning through these lenses. So here's an example. Uh, imagine you had a shirt, and you know, many of you are going to be traveling home soon. And when you travel wearing a shirt, it generally acquires some general wear and tear and filth, and in the end, you are probably going to not throw this shirt away. You're going to reuse it. So you have a task to do, some laundry. So the intent here is what? You've got a dirty shirt, and you would like it clean. The experience, then, is figuring out how to wash it and then actually washing it. And your assessment of this experience, then, is, well, is the shirt clean or is it not? Right? So it becomes very binary. You could look at it and, and feel it to get this kind of assessment of this kind of micro process. And I might be just like a giant weirdo, but I like laundry examples because as far as timeliness, laundry also has instruction often at the point of need, like within a label where it tells you what needs to be done for that particular thing so you don't need to memorize it. But that's a whole other story, but let's keep thinking of this timeliness. So anyway, back to the shirt. It being clean or not is something that's almost summative in, in, in its evaluation. But what's missing through the learning of how to wash it and actually washing it is finding out, is what I did repeatable? Am I going to be able to do the same thing again with the same shirt? Was my process transferable? Am I now going to be able to wash other types of garments? And is my process scalable? What happens when there's more of this shirt or maybe a whole bunch of mixed laundry. And so those are much more kind of process driven because even though my assessment, sure it is clean or not, is immediate and, it, and I can know if it was done right or not, there's no information there about my process of learning it. Now, at this intersection of technology, outcome-based assessment is something that machines are really good at. And I see this kind of as an accelerated uh, example, especially like in video games. So much of the feedback that's driven in there uh, happens at a high pace, but it's often outcome driven. But it's not necessarily helping people focus on their process, but their safety in those environments because you can do a lot of trial and error and take some risks. So machines are really good at that. Um, and well, in real life, not so much. Some people like to call these things routine and non-routine tasks. And if you think about it in no other simple way, machines are really good at routine tasks, and people are good at non-routine tasks. And good teachers are especially good at those things. So let, let's consider uh, a school example. Uh, I, I started my career in education as a math teacher, so yes, right triangles. So the intent here would be to learn or understand the Pythagorean theorem. 
the experience that my students might go through, some combination of direct instruction, activities, classwork, homework, maybe some sort of interdisciplinary uh, exploration, you know, if, if we're lucky and we've got the time. And my assessment might be some performance or demonstration of understanding, maybe in another school, or another class, that's a quiz, that's a test, um, something that is scored. And it might look something like this. A document that's marked up, what's right, what's wrong, here you go. My concern with this type of feedback or scoring, however you might describe it, is one around the immediacy of it. And I don't use the word immediacy to describe instancy, but rather things happening at the right time. In my experience, especially teaching in middle school, often when these types of things are handed back, it's not necessarily the best moment for the learner. Sometimes it was the best moment for me as the teacher to get it off my plate. I often find also this kind of markup lacks authenticity. What's done here is something that easily could have been done by a machine. It doesn't demonstrate that there's actually a human who cares behind it. And finally, it's completely devoid of delight in trying to not only address what might have been incorrect, but also maybe try to talk about the value in trying to improve it. So I'm going to suggest three questions that this doesn't solve all of the assessment challenges of the world. However, as you're in different assessment situations, you might ask these questions of yourself. So first, is it immediate? not necessarily instant, is it occurring at a moment of need, the best possible moment for the learner to receive such feedback? Is it authentic? Am I demonstrating that it's clear there's a caring human being behind this information that is being given back? And finally, is it delightful? Is it not only addressing, pointing out what may have been missed, but is it gonna to contribute to a process that's more repeatable, more transferable, and more scalable so that it's something that the learner can actually benefit from. So I mentioned I was a math teacher. When I was in school, I wasn't necessarily a good math student. I was a strong problem solver and computational thinker, and uh, math generally came easy to me. But that, again, did not make me a good student of math. I, I performed my way into some of the more difficult classes, and at, at one point in my learning journey, I hit a wall. All of a sudden, what used to come very easily to me and instantly make sense, zero, none. I had no idea what was going on. And this is like midway through a, a semester. So in this really difficult course for me, or something that became very difficult, I managed to set one academic record, uh, and I want to share this with you. Um, so let's just zoom in a little closer. So you can see my general approach to, to learning math and how I was feeling, my early doodling skills. And if you look really closely, you might be able to see where this is going. Let's take a look inside. So the way this test was scored, there was 23 multiple choice questions. If you got one right, you got four points. If you got one wrong, you got negative one point. And if you left a question blank, you got zero. So I got three right, I got 13 wrong, and I left seven blank for a score of negative one out of 92. And what's always like stuck with me about this example is that amidst all of the red markup and lines, that this was the same feedback that I got even when I was doing well all of those years before. So my teacher did leave one comment for me uh, on this test, and it read this. Surely, you might have done better than this. And I like to think, surely, we can all do better when we're assessing student learning. Thank you.